He quickly identifies her. She's from a species considered by most scientists to be an ancient ancestor. Australopithecus afarensis, a small chimp-like creature who walked on two legs. This is the same species as the famous Lucy, discovered in the 1970s by Don Johansson. Lucy was terribly important because she was really an amalgam and she, of, of different characteristics of ape and human. I think specimens like Salam and Lucy are extraordinary simply because you can look at them and see evolution in the making. But seeing evolution in the making will take some work. Salam's fossilized bones are solid rock, held together by a mesh of soft sandstone. It has to be painstakingly removed. He spent hours, hours, and hours, and days, and years, and years, and that removes the sand grains, grain by grain, working every day. He's been at it for eight long years, but the payoff has been amazing. As the work progressed, Zarai revealed an almost complete skull. And tucked beneath it was nearly her entire spine, along with both shoulder blades. Other bones were found nearby. An almost complete foot. This is the kneecap. The tibia here. Never before had a child's skeleton been found so ancient and so complete. Her bones would fit in a shoebox, but they speak volumes about her life. For example, to find out how old she was when she died, Zarai looked at her teeth but not the baby teeth visible in her jaw. The adult teeth growing inside the bone, as seen in a CT scan. From that, we know Salam died at age three. Like Lucy, she testifies to a crucial step in our evolution. Unlike apes, these creatures walked upright as the first fossil Don Johansson found clearly revealed. It was sticking out of the ground like that. And I gently tapped it with my uh, sneaker, and this is what fell out of the ground. And it is the, the you, this is your, the top end of your shin bone. So the kneecap would sit right in here. And very close by, in two pieces, I found this bone. And when you put them together, and you see how they move and articulate, and it has all the hallmarks of, uh, of an upright person. Other bones confirm that Lucy walked on two legs, like us. This is Lucy's pelvis. And, uh, in a, and you can see how different a chimpanzee is. And the reorientation of these, these hip bones. In a, in a chimp, they're facing straight forward. So here's, this is, this is what everybody's sitting on in their living room right now. So they're not identical, but clearly these two resemble each other much more closely, right? Than either one of these uh, resembles the pelvis of, uh, of an ape. From the waist down, Lucy was like us. From the waist up, she and her kind were all ape. Salam's skeleton is the same with chimp-like shoulder blades, giving her the range of motion needed for climbing and swinging. These ancient creatures must have spent time in the trees, possibly sleeping there at night to keep away from predators, but walking upright on the ground during the day. They were at home in two worlds. What was their environment like? must have been very different from the great rift valley of today. Across the border in Kenya, 
is one of the hottest and most barren places on Earth. A vast expanse of volcanic rock and burning desert. That's how it is now. But there's good evidence that for most of its history, it was very different. Researchers braving temperatures over 100 degrees are seeing signs of a dramatic transformation here in the Saguta Valley. The Saguta Valley was entirely covered in water, up to an elevation of about 580 meters. So you can imagine that all this valley was filled by a huge lake. A huge lake that's deeper than any of the Great Lakes. In fact, the entire African continent used to be a lot wetter than it is today. Many millions of years ago, long before Salam and Lucy, Africa was a wet tropical environment covered with rainforest. This is where the ancestors of Salam and Lucy lived. They probably looked a lot like chimps. But then Africa started to gradually dry out. the rainforest began to shrink. By Salam's time, three to four million years ago, the Great Rift Valley was a mosaic of different environments. We know that from the fossils of the animals that lived here. Their bones litter the ground. This is a canine of a hippopotamus. So this is probably a skeleton of a hippopotamus. How can one find a hippo in this type of environment? Being nice antelope. The fossils here. tell the story of a vanished landscape. This is a lower jaw of an antelope. Three million years ago, the Rift Valley was a patchwork of grassy plains, scattered woodlands, lakes, and rivers. Definitely very different from what we see here today. Wow, a nice pig here. <laughs> As their environment changed, scientists believe our ancestors changed too. They had been creatures who spent most of their time in trees, like chimps and orangutans today. But as their forests shrank, some of them developed the trait that we take for granted. Bipedalism, walking on two legs. This is one of the defining characteristics of humans. But how did bipedalism develop and why? Bipedalism is such an unusual trait. There's no other mammal that habitually walks on two legs like we do. Because it's unique, it's hard to figure out why it happened. There are a lot of theories. One of them is that they stood up to be able to see over tall grass. Another theory, they stood up to be able to pick fruits off of the low branches of trees, the way chimpanzees do today. Another theory states that they stood up to cool more efficiently so that we don't have as much sun beating on so much of our body. I think the most compelling 